So welcome everyone to the second, season, second episode of the Singers Laboratory webinar series. This is the second one in a series of 12 for 2022-23 series. And today we're going to discuss mental performance skills and how to deal with creative blocks when we perform. Just a little bit of intro before we start so you know what to expect from the presentation. We're going to identify a number of creative blocks. And then after that, I'll go through a few suggestions and exercises on how to approach those creative blocks so that we could kind of reach our potential in performance. We could reach our peak performance. And all of these exercises need time and exploration, patience, and a lot of practice. So none of them are really a quick fix. They most often really show results in with, with time, actually, and a lot of practice. The first step that I wanted to mention is that, you know, during the pandemic, I started starting all of my choir rehearsals and all the lessons with a few different mindfulness exercises. It seemed that we couldn't just get to a rehearsal, an online rehearsal, and sing like before. There were so many things happening in the world that we really needed to be in a specific mindset to even start to focus and really get the best out of the rehearsal. So that's when I started doing a lot of mindfulness exercises. I have been meditating for a lot of years and I saw a lot of good results from it. So I incorporated it into my music work. Last episode was all about mindfulness exercises and meditation. So you can check them out on my YouTube page. But I wanted to bring it up here very briefly and to mention that, of course, there's a lot of myths and misunderstandings about meditation, but there's actually many different types of mindfulness exercises. I've listed some of them here. There is sitting, walking and laying down meditations. So we don't need to always be sitting down to focus. There is silence versus guided meditations. There is gratitude, mantra and loving kindness mindfulness. There is a body scan meditation that we'll go through briefly today together, as well as mind movement based uh, exercises and many, many more. These are just a few. Now, there is many different purposes and, you know, pros to doing mindfulness exercises, but I wanted to list a few of them here just so that we know what's the goal for doing meditation. A lot of times the first goal is focus and getting into a really specific headspace so that we could either rehearse, practice, learn or perform. Other things that come with meditation is physical relaxation, mental calm, emotional stability and ability to also get into a growth mindset so that we could really see the pace of our improvement and our growth, as well as just an ability to let go of things that we can't control. Just to try a little bit of mindfulness for today, I wanted to include a short five minutes body scan. And all you have to do is to just focus on your breathing and listen to my voice to just get a sense of meditation and what this all means. So you can sit or stand however you're comfortable. When you're ready, let your eyes close gently. And let's focus on our breathing. In our mind, we can count one on the inhale and two on the exhale. Let's try it for a few breaths. Anytime we're distracted, we go back to the counting. Now through this body scan, we're going to focus on the different parts of our body and try to relax them and soften into specific movements just using our breath. So let's bring the attention to the feet. We can wiggle the toes. Let's observe what kinds of sensations are present there. Maybe warmth or cold, tension, relaxation, or just no sensation at all for now. That's all okay. We're going to move up to the ankles. You can do ankle rolls. Now let's think about the shins and the calves. 
with every exhalation, we want to invite a sense of relaxation. A sense of warmth, maybe, and softening. There's a little bend in the knees and our thighs are relaxed. If you're seated, you can imagine that you're melting into the chair. So there is no holding or tension in any part of the body. We can place our hands on our belly and let's just focus on the rise and fall of the belly as we breathe. This is something that a lot of singers are pretty familiar with. As we breathe, we want to invite a movement, an expansion of the entire girdle of the core. Can we feel our back muscles maybe expand? The tailbone, the pelvic floor, the entire core, very gently. Let's now focus on the rise and fall of the chest. The chest is open, the collarbones are expanded. We're seated tall and straight and there is a movement in the chest as we breathe. And like always, we don't wanna just focus on the front of the body, but also the back as well. Back muscles help us a lot in singing. So let's observe what's happening in the back muscles. Can we feel a subtle, very subtle expansion and extension as we breathe? Our shoulders are relaxed, they move back and down. If it feels good, we can gently massage our arms. A little bit more awareness into our arms. Maybe even moving our fingers a little bit. What sensations are present there? The neck is tall. Let's go back to our breathing again. The front and the back of the neck are relaxed. That's where our voice box is housed. When we sing, we want to make sure that we don't strain our neck. We don't look up or down too much. The chin is parallel to the floor. Now let's soften our facial muscles. If it feels good, we can always gently massage our face. Let's start with the forehead. Moving down to the cheeks. Let the jaw go and relax the tongue in the mouth. Are there any sensations present in our head? We can massage our head too, without messing up our hair. <laughs> Through this body scan, we've worked all the way from toes to the top of our head. We've brought awareness and attention to every part of our body. Relax them, soften them just to prepare for singing and also to prepare our mind to focus. Now let's take a few breaths and just be aware of the entirety of body in a space. We use our entire bodies for performance, for singing.
when you're ready, blink your eyes open. So that was just one small example of what a body scan meditation could look like and everybody feels different during it. Some people feel relaxed, some people actually start feeling fidgety. It, people react completely differently to it. But the purpose of that is to not only bring attention to what kind of a mindset we want to have before we start doing something, but also to bring awareness to the body, to relax the body. Throughout the day, we tend to, you know, especially if you sit behind a computer, there's a lot of tension that kind of just settles in, you know, and this way we just release everything before we start to practice. Now, through this session, I'll go through a few exercises that help mentally. They are kind of help you with mental performance skills. But I wanted to mention that this is no substitute to practice. Practice always comes first, and that's very important to note. To note. These exercises are a good complementary thing for performance, for practice. Next webinar, actually in November, I'll discuss specifically different ways on how to learn new songs, how to tackle a new song, how to most effectively practice. And that webinar is gonna be on November 27th. And it's its whole thing, so I wanted to just briefly mention that before moving to our mental performance skills. First and foremost, I always ask my students and choristers, and even for myself, when I practice, when I sing, is to set up an intention for yourself. Before every practice, let that intention guide your mindset, let that intention guide your work. You can pick anything as your intention, anything that really works for you, or you think that you need to remind yourself of it. I included a few examples here that I really like, so you can use some of these. Throughout this lesson, I will be focused. It could be something as simple as that. You can write it down on a piece of paper, in your score, even on your fridge, anywhere that you can see it often and be reminded of it. I'm patient with my pace of learning and improvement. Sometimes you just need to say that out loud to yourself. I accept my strengths and weaknesses and thrive to get better every day. I am confident when I perform and I feel energized and ready at the performance. So now go ahead and choose an intention for yourself for this session, for today, or just for next week. Pick one intention that you think would, would really serve you for the next few days. It could be anything. It could be simple, it could be small. This is what I definitely recommend you doing before every time you practice. Now let's get into some of the exercises. So the first thing that I really like bringing attention to is actually identifying what kind of negative thoughts or self-talks we give ourselves, whether before a performance or when we practice or just on a day-to-day -day basis. Zada Simon wrote a book, he published that book in 2020, and he includes a list of different ways we think. So I wanted to just include it here as a guide, just as a reference point, as something to go off of. So labeling thoughts are the ways that we talk to ourselves normally. And sometimes we're not aware of that, right? So think about some patterns of how do you usually talk to yourself, especially as it relates to your artistic creative work. There are also filtering thoughts where we laser focus on only the negative and we don't see any positives. There is black and white thinking, which is basically all or nothing thinking. We think something that happened might have been all good or all bad. There is also overgeneralization, when if something happens once, we think that's how it's going to happen all the time. An example could be that maybe a high note that didn't sound good at a concert once we sang. Then we think every time we sing, all the high notes are going to be bad. So that's an overgeneralization. There is also jumping to conclusions, which is pretty self-explanatory, and catastrophizing. That's a common one. So we always go to what-if scenarios, and those what-if scenarios are oftentimes worst-case scenarios. So catastrophizing is very common. There is personalization and control fallacies. One means that everything becomes, it's all about me, basically, kind of a mindset, and the other one is that it's all my fault mindset. Again, that's a little bit of a black and white thinking. There is blaming, 
there is should mindset, so I should have performed better, I should have practiced better. And finally, emotional reasoning, where we're defined by one emotion. So if we feel sad one day, we think we're depressed. And that, again, is a little bit of maybe filtering and labeling as well. So let's reflect for a few seconds on just negative thoughts, thoughts that pop in our heads when it relates to our artwork, when it relates to our learning journey, our performance. We all have our list, you know. I just want to bring awareness to this. If it feels good, you can write them down, keep them in mind. In the next exercise, I'm going to tell you how to tackle them. So just a few seconds to reflect. If you'd like, feel free to share them in the chat box. A lot of those thoughts which amongst artists, it ends up being very similar things. Now that we have written down some of our negative thoughts, I want to call this changing the narrative exercise. So write down what you want your narrative to be, not what others told you or what you think it is. You need to write down your story with everything. A few questions that could help you construct this narrative is, what kind of an artist do you want to be? And that's very general, but it could, you know, it could apply to so many things. It's a generic question that could have thousands of different kinds of answers. Another thing is, how do you plan to move, challenge, and heal audiences? And then how these questions kind of feed into your narrative. And that narrative, you can include even elements of technique. How do you want your technique to be, your vocal technique? How do you want your emotional expressivity to be, your stage presence? Build your own narrative first and write it down. One exercise that I really like when approaching just negative self-talk or just a spiral of thoughts is something that I call observe, pause, and redirect. So the first step is to just identify that there is a negative talk, negative thought. Then we stop. So as soon as we identify it, we need to kind of develop this habit of really pausing, not letting it get out of hand. Before it is out of hand, we want to stop. You can write them down and then you want to actively, consciously change a negative statement that you had to a positive substitute. I've included a chart here with negative talks and then a positive substitute. So the first one is, I don't belong here. A positive substitute is, I do belong here and deserve to be here. And sometimes, honestly, it's very simple. But we need to bring awareness to it and we need to actively say it to ourselves to believe it. Another one is, I'm not good enough. I trust my skills, practice, and hard work. Last one, I should have practiced more. This is a common one. I did the best I could with the time that I had. Another way for these creating these positive statements is to just create affirmations for yourself. Create positive affirmations, put it on your fridge, in your car, in all of your notebooks, in your music scores, somewhere that you can see it enough times that you can believe, you can start believing in it. At first, it might feel awkward actually, and kind of you might not always believe in things, but over time with practice, it really starts to settle and you start to embody it. So a few examples here I've included. I can and will perform better. I worked hard for this and now I'm going to enjoy it. I want the audience to go on a journey with me. There will be imperfections, but that's okay. Whenever I'm on my learning path, wherever I am, it is my truth. It can't be questioned, it can't be analyzed, it can't be judged. And finally, I love singing because fill the blank. So these are just a few info, a few things that you can use to create positive affirmations for yourself. And of course, not all of these things match with everybody's personality. So pick ones that really work for you. So we addressed 
a few things just in terms of thoughts which are more like internally but some other things that are quite important to address is just distractions where we practice when we perform there are internal and external distractions some of them we have control over some of them we don't but it's important to identify them and actually do something about the things we could control Sometimes a distraction could be other singers singing around us, especially if you're in a choir environment. Sometimes a loud instrument in the orchestra could be distracting. The environment, if it's hot or cold, the temperature, the noise, it all could be a source of distraction. The audience themselves could be distracting. Maybe they're very reactive. They're actually engaging with your performance and sometimes too much engagement with that could distract us from our work as well. Acoustics in the concert hall is another one where we start hearing ourselves differently than maybe the room we practice in. Lighting is one. So if you're using your music, if it's too little light or too much light, that could be a that could take time before we can adjust to it. If you're wearing a new outfit or new shoes for a performance that you've never worn before, that could be very distracting, especially if they're uncomfortable, right? So we always want to make sure we practice in those new outfits. And also worries, stress, anxiety are internal distractions. So now let's reflect on what are some of the distractions that affect you the most in a performance scenario. Reflect on that, write a few notes. Are some of them elements that we could actually control and plan for? They probably are, I bet. Some other ones we really can't control, you know? But the ones that we can control we want to make sure we identify. This kind of a distraction exercise, distraction control, is also something that athletes do. You know, really professional athletes, they, they do similar things as well. Now, when we have identified distractions and we know which ones are actually in our control, then we want to get into an exercise that I created with three really simple columns, before, during, and after. So in every column, you want to write down what you usually do, what you usually feel and think before, during, or after a performance and rehearsal. Really, we want to make sure we think of this very consciously, you know, and really realize that we have so much more power than we think. So before a performance, we probably have a routine, right? We do a specific warm ups maybe reflect on what do you normally eat before a performance do you have very little appetite or do you usually tend to eat a lot do you take a nap before a performance or is it one of those days that you just can't sleep well are there any what if scenarios that come to your mind any doubt and worry about your performance so write down what you usually do in that column for during the performance do you feel worried and anxious do you really feel like you have a lot of fun when you're on stage? What are you usually distracted by? Is it the audience or the conductor, the musicians maybe, the temperature in the room, a lot of people in the concert hall? What is it that really distracts you the most? And then in the after column, how do you usually feel after a performance? Do you have a sense of relief? Do you want to celebrate and it's all amazing? Or do you have could have scenarios? I could have done this to sing better. I should have looked at conductor more. Do you get into an analysis mindset when you want to analyze everything? And maybe that doesn't always feel great. Maybe it's not always constructive. So this exercise is for you to realize your own patterns and kind of routines of how you, you do things before, during, and after a performance. After you've identified this, you fill out the exact same chart, but this time you decide how you want to feel, what you want to think, and what you want to do before, during, and after a performance. This is something you have control over. And you can start visualizing everything. Visualization is a very powerful exercise. Public speakers do it. Artists do it. Athletes do it. You can do it with everything. You can visualize, you can sit down and literally visualize yourself walking to the stage or waiting in the dressing room as stress is building up walking on the stage 
maybe there is a little bit of a dread, you sing, how are you feeling afterwards? You can visualize all of that. You can visualize musical elements in your song as well. I, I imagine this phrase moving this way. I want this kind of a phrase direction. I want this kind of an emotion. So visualization helps in many different ways, but I've included two here. So not only it allows your brain to experience it once before it actually happens, it also helps you embody some stuff like emotions. So a lot of times when you visualize things before they happen, when they actually happen, your brain actually goes, oh, I've done this before. I've been through this before. So it feels familiar to it and it doesn't need time to readjust. It doesn't get overwhelmed. And then it can only focus on those elements that we're out of our control in a concert situation. Rather than being overwhelmed by things that were our control and were not in our control. So we're really trying to eliminate and really kind of decrease the number of things that our brain feels overwhelmed by or feels that it's unfamiliar. So before a performance, the day of or right before, you can sit down and visualize and really plan, this is what I'm going to eat because it's a nutritious meal. This is how I'm going to feel. I'm going to choose to feel a specific way. I'm not going to let everything just kind of like drag me here and there. This is how exactly I'm going to practice and warm up. And finally, I would encourage you to also plan for bad things. What if you're fatigued right before a rehearsal of concert? What if you feel like your throat really feels kind of weird? What if you're anxious? What are you going to do? So visualize that and come up with a recovery plan. During the performance, visualize waiting in the backstage. Visualize walking on stage. Visualize looking out in the crowd. And also imagine that things are going wrong. Come up with a recovery plan. You need to visualize things going bad and that you overcoming those. So when they actually happen, in a lot of scenarios, you can control that. And afterwards, how do you want to feel and what a state of mind do you want to be in? This is a very powerful, powerful exercise. One of the books that I read during the pandemic is, is written by Kelly McGonigal, who is a psychologist, and the book is called The Upside of Stress, Why Stress is Good for You. So she draws from a whole bunch of different research to say why, why we don't need to always actually run away from a stress. She talks about ways in which we could change our survival mode or, or mindset into a challenge mindset where we have fun and we're actually rising up to the challenge. Something that really stuck with me since I read the book is that she said next time you're stressed out, you feel anxious on stage or for a presentation, don't try to calm down. Don't tell yourself, oh, I'm stressed, I need to calm down. And I was like, why? So she said, remember that your body and brain are actually gearing up so that you could rise up to the challenge. The stress is trying to help you to rise up to the challenge. So don't try to calm it down because it's trying to help you. So I definitely recommend this book. You can also get it from, the, from public libraries probably. So what we practice today um, helps with a bunch of skills called mental performance skills. Recently, there has been a lot of books written on this, as well as a lot of research is being done. It's really, really fascinating. And if you're interested to learn more about it, just feel free to reach out to me I'll be, and I'll be more than happy to send some resources your way. So after this webinar, you'll receive an email from me with the link to my YouTube page and also the webinars page so that you could check out the future webinars. You can email me if you'd like to chat further or if you just have a cool thing to share with me, feel free to reach out. I always love to connect with new people. Uh, and also I wanted to mention everybody that registers for these webinars is eligible for a one-time 30 minute voice or piano lesson with me at a pay what you can rate. So if you are interested in setting up that 30 minute lesson, you can definitely reach out to me and we'll work something out. Perfect. So that's it for me. Thanks so much. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And now I'd like to get any questions or comments or concerns. And I'll also write my email in the chat.
You're welcome. Did you find anything particularly interesting or cool or, I don't know, not useful even? <laughs> it's all okay. I'm always curious to see which ones everybody finds most interesting. Do you think you will incorporate any of these in your own work maybe? Hi. Hi. I, I love the uh, before uh, doing the columns of three items before, during, and after. I think that is so helpful. And then, oh, turn, yeah, and, and turning it around. Um, and um, and what I loved as well was I want to take the audience on a journey with me. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And I love that because a lot of my repertoire uh, are songs with a lot of meaning. I like very wordy songs that. Um, a very have a lot of meaning behind them and so that's something i'm working on is oh, creating a stage persona where i have a little story then i go into the song oh and wonderful so yeah I, lo I, I love the way a, a bit like charles asdebaugh uh, or liza minnelli that kind of like a okay. raconteur yeah <laughs> that's that's what i'm working on towards but i love that i want the audience to go on a journey with me oh, because that's i think wonderful. Yes, by taking the audience, it, I'm sure it would give me as a person a lot more confidence as well, because I wouldn't be thinking about myself and my nerves. I yeah. would be creating even more of a story. So I, I really enjoyed those two points in particular. Thank yes. you. Oh, okay, I'm glad. And it's always about that bigger picture, right? Because sometimes we get mm. stuck in our own minds and our own worries and our own work. But at the end of the day, it is, it is actually about the audience. And with that bigger picture also really helps us, right? For that bigger meaning, you know, it's not always about, oh, I didn't get that one note wrong, you know? It's that bigger meaning that really kind of puts everything into perspective, I guess. And I actually also, I'm going to have a webinar on a storytelling and textual analysis specifically yeah, because that's also something that I'm really passionate about. I always read poetry, you know, and I specifically like Victorian literature and I wrote my thesis on Victorian literature as well. So it's something that I, I think is so important and it's really fun to do, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah lovely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me today and feel free to reach out to me if there is anything oh, yeah. further. Yes. Yes, is definitely. There, yes. Is there any other questions or comments? Perfect. If there are no questions or comments, we can definitely end here, but feel free to reach out to me and it's so nice to meet you again. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you so much, Adia, and uh, I'll be in contact. I'd love to take you up on the uh, half hour uh, singing. That would be okay, fabulous. Sounds good. Perfect. Look forward to it. I definitely. And also, um, I really look forward to your other webinars as well. Really, thanks so much. They're very much what I, I need. Okay, thanks so Lovely. much. I appreciate so, it. Thank you and, and, and uh, I'll you. send you an day. email. Sounds good. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.